deep winter grips the upper Great Lakes. A harsh place to be in winter, unless you're trying to find wolves. That was good. Then it's the best time to go looking. Capture teams from the U.S. National Park Service and Ontario's Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry are out scouting for wolves. Not to kill them, but to capture them. It's part of a three to five year effort to capture and move 20 to 30 wolves to a new home on Isle Royal National Park in Michigan. They captured this wolf in a net fired from the chopper. Good work, Scott. Good team effort. Once the wolf is entangled, they run up and sedate it immediately to decrease stress on the animal. <laughs> Snoring. And he's black, a rare color in wolves, an indication that offers genetic diversity, a perfect candidate for relocation. The capture team has a second wolf in sight. He tries to escape across the frozen lake, but it's hopeless. This is a big adult male. He's very thin, but he's got a big head on him, big teeth. And, uh, and my guess is it's one that we had collared earlier that dropped its collar. He's been living on Ontario's Mishapakotan Island, where wolves have wiped out all of the caribou. Not enough food to go around. Those are big paws. This is a big dog. Yeah. And uh, even though he's thin, because when this guy puts some beef back on, he'll be uh, he'll be quite the moose killer. It's been a good day. Three wolves, a black and two grays. The wolves are on their way to a veterinary check station in Wawa, Ontario. Here, the captive wolves go in for a wolf checkup to make sure they're healthy before being taken to the wilderness island. Kevin, can you grab the blanket? Yep. Heart and lungs. Vital statistics. Upper left and lower left. They get their teeth checked, too. Not bad. Right, upper canine, 25. 25? Yep. 14. And they get tested for dog diseases, heartworm, parvo, distemper, canine diseases that wolves get too. That's it, and now we wait for eight minutes. So what we're seeing here on this test is that blue dot there is the positive control, which is, means the test has worked, and we're seeing no other positive dots that suggest that he's uh, been in contact or been infected by any of these particular diseases. It's good to go. The tests are negative, no infections from the past. Now the vets want to protect the wolves against the future, too. We're giving the wolf vaccinations for common canine diseases like uh, distemper and parvo Michelle, can you drop that for rabies. a second? Yep. They get a green ear tag for ID and a GPS collar to help researchers keep track of them in their new home. Because these two wolves and a couple dozen more are on their way to a new life, in a new world. A world called Isle Royal. Isle Royal is an island. It sits 20 miles off the northwest coastline of Lake Superior, opposite Thunder Bay, Ontario. Native Americans visited here after the Great Ice Sheets retreated several thousand years ago and still celebrate their deep connection to the island. They came for what the island had to offer, rich fisheries, rare plants, and some of the purest copper deposits anywhere on Earth. The Chippewa Nation has always thought of Isle Royal as a sacred place. 
Today, it's a U.S. national park, which the Park Service rigorously maintains as a wilderness. 45 miles long, nine miles wide, it's difficult to find a wilder, more isolated place. It's also the site of the oldest predator-prey study in the world. For 60 years, researchers have observed and learned from the relationship between wolves and moose on Isle Royale. An ecosystem is like a large puzzle with many pieces. Without a healthy wolf-moose relationship, a big piece of that puzzle is missing, and the picture is incomplete. The Park Service had a decision to make. Hands off the wilderness of Isle Royale, or act to restore the ecosystem. After looking at and weighing all the options, ultimately, introducing wolves was the best option. The decision was made for the good of the entire ecosystem on Isle Royale. The landscape was a focal point. What's going on and how it interacts with these predator and prey. We decided on this course because we felt it would help keep resiliency in the system. And the moose are major, like, forest mowers, if you will. They eat a lot of forage every day. And by putting the predator back on the landscape, because we were down to just two of them, it makes a huge difference in the type of tree species that will survive, as well as the effects on our streams and lakes. There was a healthy population of wolves here for almost 60 years. But now, only two wolves remain on the island. So the moose population has ballooned to 2,000. Beaver lodge numbers are over 540. Both species are changing the landscape and the ecosystem. The reason we're bringing wolves out is to be that apex predator. And the reason we want an apex predator in the ecosystem is that we want to have all the pieces. And the apex predator is just one piece. You know, the herbivore, although it chews on the plant community and can in high numbers damage it, they also serve their purpose. And so when we think about the whole, it's important to have every piece contributing in its own way. And so apex predator being one of them, the park is here to protect all its resources, not just wolves, not just moose. We're here for everything, and so we want to make sure the forest can continue on as it should. The plan is to restore the presence of wolves on Isle Royal, and thereby restore the ecosystem. Over the next few years, the U.S. National Park Service and its collaborators intend to capture males and females and move them out to Isle Royal to grow the population and refresh the gene pool. Is that? He's thin. He's thin, yeah, but I thought he'd be really thin. So far, 19 of 30 wolves have been relocated to the island. Right now, and for the last several decades, we've been trying to understand the significance of wolves in this ecosystem. How do they affect moose populations, beaver populations, and indirectly the effect on, on the forest itself? And that's uh, still our major overall goal. The scientific challenge now, when the wolf population has been restarted, is whether you can restart the system and see the same thing unfold that we have been looking at for 50 years. Rolf Peterson is a wildlife biologist who, for the past 50 years of his career, has made Isle Royal his central focus. For him, the relationship between wolf and moose on the island is the important one to watch. So we have about 20,000 bones collected from moose over the last 60 years. And so we've got a record of Isle Royal produced moose that stretches back to World War II. So we collect these moose bones to keep track of the moose population health and body size over decades. And wolves provide most of these bones for us. We have special teams of volunteers that go through the woods for a week at a time in the summertime looking for bones also, in addition to the ones we find in the wintertime. 
And then we also collect a metatarsal bone, which is the lowest leg bone uh, in a moose's rear leg, because this is sensitive to early nutrition. So it's about half grown when a moose is born, and it's a reflection of the health of the mother. The mother of the calf really determines how well off her calf is nutritionally and how big it is when it's born. And that turns out to have a lifelong effect on the lifespan of that moose and the susceptibility to arthritis. Yeah, a lot of the health challenges of moose, old moose, are similar to, to those of people. The park has also reached out to universities to expand the ecosystem studies. Park Service and student crews from the State University of New York's College of Environmental Sciences and Forestry review collar data for clusters of wolf activity and then hit the field to search for and evaluate what drew the wolf to the site. We got a moose bed. Was it a predation event, a wolf resting site, or scavenging? Little pieces of wolf hair in this bed, probably some from the undercoat. Oh, wow. Yeah. As we all know, over long term, wolves typically form what we refer to as packs. Yet um, here we have an introduction effort where wolves have come from a number of different locations that have been put on this landscape that they're unfamiliar with. So one thing we're very interested in is um, social organization of the wolves in this introduction. Who will they interact with? Who will they avoid? Who will they actually um, join together with to form associations and ultimately packs? And where will those packs occur on the landscape? The wolves may be the stars of Isle Royal, but the moose play a strong supporting role, so they're getting collars too, so scientists can keep track of the moose as well as the wolves. Seth Moore, biologist for the Grand Portage Band of Lake Superior Chippewa, assists with moose capture and collaring as part of a long-term study to compare moose populations and health between Isle Royal and the mainland. We're just looking at her age. She's a, a middle-aged On mainland Minnesota, moose are struggling to survive. There are perhaps 2,000 moose on the island today, and that might be too many for the available food. Lynette Potvin is an ecologist at Isle Royal National Park. Her specialty, the connection between the plant community on the island and the moose. The moose population is basically going to eat themselves out of house and home, and they won't have any sort of forage availability. That's bad for the moose and other island creatures. So we have uh, marten that use uh, large deciduous trees for habitat. Snowshoe hare also browse on all of the same species that the, that the moose do, but in lower densities. We have beavers, which are dependent on aspen for building their dams. And so when we have these high populations of different herbivores, it basically changes the entire way that the ecosystem functions. What we're expecting to see is a cascading effect of wolves regulating the population of moose, and in turn, the moose will be lim more limited in their browse across the island. So we'll see more balsam fir on the west end. And on the east end, we'll see more recruitment of aspen, one of the important species on the other side of the island, and sugar maples. In short, more biodiversity. Biodiversity gives ecosystems their strength and resilience in the face of change. And things are changing on Isle Royal. The island is 20 miles offshore. The question often gets asked, how did wolves and moose get here in the first place? No one is sure about the moose. Moose are excellent swimmers, but 20 miles is a long way, even for them. Maybe a hunt club introduced them early in the 20th century. The truth is, we don't know how the moose got to Isle Royal. How the wolves got here is easier to understand. 
It's now clear. They came over in the winter on the ice bridge. Uh, wolves were comfortable on ice, even thin ice. So that's been their major way to get back and forth. The isolation of the island, the island effect, began to take a toll on the health of the remaining wolves. Then came a warming climate. And eventually the island effect was accentuated by the disappearing ice between the island and the mainland, which had allowed wolves to come over periodically and bring in new genes. We think that is the reason why the population kept going for 70 years. Winter ice bridges are important to the genetic refreshment of the wolf population. But as winters warm, the ice bridges become less reliable. So today, the new bridge to Isle Royal is by air and boat, and these mainland wolves are the founders of a whole new population on Isle Royal. The island is a unique place to study wolves and moose because of one other important thing. There is no hunting of any kind, no direct death by human. Hunting changes their behavior. On the island, they're left to themselves to figure it out without human harassment. Except the occasional plane overhead, tracking their whereabouts. And being immobilized on occasion, and wearing satellite collars. This is not Yellowstone. This is not where you can sit on the side of a road and use a, a telescopic lens and watch the animals do what animals do. Here our cover is so thick and it's so dense that we're using kind of the most modern technology, if you can, to track how well our guesses are. The latest collars let researchers track where the wolves go, which ones stay together, the territory they establish, and how well they're doing as predators. What the teams are looking for now is the formation of at least one wolf pack, which will indicate a mating pair and any possible sign of newborn pups. But the collars can only reveal so much. To truly understand what's happening, researchers must gather more tangible evidence from the field. We've had some issues with some of the GPS collars that have been put on these wolves. Some of them have been failing prematurely. And so we have a camera array currently deployed across the island and we're reviewing those images to look at wolves that trigger the cameras and we're looking for evidence of pups. We're also going to potential den sites, rendezvous sites, and looking for evidence particularly um, scats that may be there to um, determine first of all if they are wolves and then if the quality is high enough individual identification of those scats so we can get a minimum number of wolves you know pups in this case that may have been born to a particular female. The park has deployed over 150 cameras hoping to capture images of any pups born on the island. Their first success emerged earlier this year, when researchers returned to recover footage captured during the fall and winter months. When we came back this spring, we picked up an image showing definitely two pups from last September uh, that would have been born to the female translocated to Isle Royal, so she was translocated pregnant. She successfully found a place to den and reared pups, and they survived through to the winter. Oh, it's great news because it's important that the population contain individuals of all ages so that when these yearlings grow up, they'll hopefully disperse from their territory and intermingle with other wolves. And that's not all the team found this spring. GPS color data indicated that another female denned up on the southwest side of the island in April, most likely to give birth to pups that were actually conceived here. Once she left the den site, the team recovered 18 pup-sized scats, a great indication new pups may have been born. And then, as they combed through more remote camera clips, they uncovered these grainy images taken at night, 
of what appears to be another new pup on the northeastern side of the island. That was a little bit of a surprise because we ended up running through our camera array and picking up the photo of that pup. And we don't know who that pup belongs to yet. We'll need to get some genetic evidence or further pictures of this pup with an adult, but it definitely confirms that we've had reproduction at both ends of the island, which means we have roughly two packs. Uh, we just can't assign that pup to parents yet. It'll take more field research to confirm exactly how many pups have been born and how many have survived. But these initial discoveries are a major step in the right direction. I mean, having reproduction at two different ends of the island, suggesting there are at least two packs, you know, we're well on our way to meeting the goals of the project, which is, you know, three to four packs, um, having reproduction on an annual basis, killing moose, killing beavers, you know, doing everything that wolves do. I mean, that's, that's what we want and we want to see it. And we're, and we're super pleased about having this information. It'd be great if we had more, but we'll take it. <laughs> The hesitancy of this yearling wolf approaching the cold waters of Isle Royal on the trail of a moose is a reflection of the tenacity and the needs of wolves. A single experienced wolf can take down an adult moose, but not without serious risk of injury. The future of any pups will depend on whether they can find a mate and a social structure that allows them to flourish in this isolated ecosystem. So it's mainly for wolves the challenge of finding a vulnerable moose, and that may take them days of hunting. Right now, with the moose population real high, lots of calves, lots of yearlings, and an aging bunch of adults, it should be fairly easy for the next few years. Studying the impacts of these wolves on an ecosystem under stress from climate change gives humans insight into changes we can only imagine at this time. Isle Royal is a very unique environment to work in and it's really uh, tough to fully understand some of the stories that are here. We still don't know how this story is going to end. 